him away from victory. So Mark Selby breaks off and uh, what a match it's been, but he'll be looking to put this match to bed here, particularly as he's got to come out again this evening. As we, well, as Ian was saying, two, two matches to play today. You don't want to spend a lot of nervous energy. Yes, yeah, very good point, John. It's something you think about as a player. It does sometimes put you under extra pressure. So you don't want to see the match prolonged more than necessary. This match, though, is sailing along. It's only been in progress some 62 and a bit minutes. Average frame time, 15 and a half minutes, so it's pretty good going. Both players' pot success percentages are at 96. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? But I actually, do you know what? I, I remember, John, a match, I think it was may have been earlier this season or last season, Neil Robson had a pot percentage of 99% and lost the match. I think it was between Burns. Yeah, I do remember that, yeah. Yeah. And that's the nature of uh, the game, and particularly in these best of sevens. You don't have to miss much to uh, to lose them. Rolling this to the middle, feels the only ball he could leave was the one he was playing, and it's gone in. So he gets first chance. Never anywhere else. Nine. Well, a few loose reds to, to play for, but not to say what sort of an angle. I mean, if he's got an angle where he could stun, it, stun into the, the red that's immediately above the black, catch it half ball on the left-hand side, and he still have those loose reds available. Well, he screwed into it, and that's why he's on nothing. If it had stunned it, you see, 16. but you see the backspin taking place. If it had stunned that, hit that half ball, the cue ball would have released from the main bunch. And you feel certain he'd have been on that red just below the blue to the right middle. Yeah, the shot that he played is actually okay as long as you get a lot more power into the shot. I mean, Judd Trump would play that Not shot that way but he gets so much action on the keyboard it fizz through the pack of reds and that didn't happen there for not on saying up funny though really when you're playing these top players you, you see their progress through the earlier rounds and you think god they're not playing that well got my fancy my chances here and you're knocking a one four seven that's the only frame you've won and you watch your opponent make breaks of 107 115 and 54 i think I wasn't playing anything like that in the earlier rounds why is he doing it against me Well, be forced into playing a pot here. 
the red second from the, the left as we look. Because I can't see a return to Bork. And I don't really see a convincing... That's the one. Straight enough, isn't it? But I don't see the containing safety. Well, he's playing the other one. Does he think he can get back to Bork? Only a half-hearted attempt at the pot. I think he was a little undecided there what to play. It was a half-hearted attempt at something, I'm not quite certain what. The fact that Mark Selby now is going down to that end of the table tells me he's going to play a safety shot to the balk end. Well, he's decided to play this red near the, the balk line. He won't be playing the pot, just sending it back at the table. He's got to avoid the double kiss, which he has avoided. be pleased with his performance so far today but the match isn't over yet we just feel that if Napon Sangam can get a decent opportunity he's very capable of taking it yes I think his best plan of attack would be to attack, I think, not on Sengham. But the problem is, Mark Selby's safety is so good, he's not giving the young Thai player much opportunity to take pots on. Just get to the edge of the pack of reds to play a safety hit. Too thick. And well, he's left a tempter here for Mark Selby. And I think he can just cue past the yellow. He wants to play the red to the left corner. Well, he's maybe spotted something else that pots. Or does he just think it's better to play a good safety? Decided the pots were too risky. A little bit annoyed there as he walks back because he didn't want to tie the black up, which he has done.
little bit of a stalemate at the moment, and the reason being is that red near the right corner. Just feel as if you go up to the ball end, you're going to leave the chance of that. I don't see how you're not going to. So we might have a little bit of tip tapping. Well, looks as though Mark's going to take a chance and try and cover that. Well, there's a few reds, I suppose, that could come in the way. Well, I don't think he was using the green as a block, and I don't think he's done it. Strange choice of shot, really, that from Mark. And he can clearly get through to it. I mean, I'd say, glibly, it's the type of shot you'd play when you were 3-1 in front. But, of course, in these best of sevens, you can't drop your guard for a moment. No, and particularly the way the reds are spread, one good pot and position, and they got every chance to win the frame. I know the black's tied up, and the pink may pot into the left corner, but let's be honest, I, I can't see him getting onto a colour from this red. And it's dangerous to leave it there for Mark Selby, it has to play extraordinarily good safety shot to block it. So he may just pop the red and play a good safety shot afterwards. I don't know. What do you think, John? Well, he could, as you say, just birdie the red. You get shots, though, you like. I used to love these shots. I played with left-hand side a lot of top to check it off the second cushion. It was, it was a shot I really enjoyed playing this. You got to be accurate. You're playing with pace, of course. Well, I wouldn't... Aye, 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 aye! <laughs> I saw one of them last week, I think, in the tournament at Cheltenham, where the ball finished up on the side cushion. Now, I've never seen anything like that in my life. And if that red had gone in, it counted. You know, I thought, pace. Yeah, just watch this. Oh, it's so close, isn't it? What a... I haven't seen that happen for ages, John, have you? No, no. I mean, technically, according to rules, that red could fall on the floor, go around the crowd, say hello to everybody and jump back in a pocket and it would count. We're not in Las Vegas. <laughs> I mean, what would have been funnier just looking at it or thinking about it again, when the red came down, if the white had come across and knocked it in that time, which he could have done. Yeah, I thought that was going to happen at one point. Yeah. Good safety shot, though, wasn't it? Left nothing. Yeah, I never thought of it. Just one quick last look. When it came down, imagine if the white had a bit and knocked it in. Nearly knocked the white off, but it got safe. Things that happen on a snooker table. I'm more interested in why that red actually mounted the cushion rail. Should be really have done. That was a terrific shot, and I won't criticise him for not reaching the bought cushion. Striking down like that, putting the amount of side on to avoid the double kiss. Well played. There are two reds just by the pink spot there that look dangerously close to a plant, but if Mark can get through to the red to the right corner, which he can do, well, here's a bold shot, and I wonder if he dare try to cannon the red away from the black here. Oh, he tried to, didn't he? Need some luck, and I think he's going to get some. Yeah, just tried to stun into the red there to knock it away from the black and leave himself on the black. There's a lot going on there with that shot. Didn't quite come off, but he'll be delighted. He's left it safe. One mistake now. Look at the position of the Reds. Could be a frame winner for either player.
Mm. It just shows you sometimes it's been all free-flowing snooker. People, players getting in, potting, break, building, but we've had this little bout of safety now in this frame, and it just seems to have taken the edge, closing of the eyes now, and wondering whether that mistake could have cost him this match. A couple of opportunities. There's the red just below the black, but being so close to the cushion, it's, you know, you've got to bit, do a bit with the cue ball, but this is the one he's taking on, digging in. Got to cue this well, and you've got to find the centre of the cue ball here. One. Could not have played it better. Didn't overhit it, struck it beautifully. And that could set him up for a frame and match winning opportunity. Certainly one of the game's great front runners, Mark Selby, doesn't suffer from what we call in the trade, so to speak, clincher's disease. Doesn't see the winning line too soon. I'm afraid of it. Nine. Marches forward through it. You'd be very disappointed here, Mark Selby, not to win frame a match from here. Twenty-five. Played that nicely. Still in thirty-two. Good position. 16 points to lead now so you would think probably five of these remaining reds to clinch frame and match 33 and the reason i say five well we got a little unexpected bounce it's what we were saying earlier wasn't it sometimes when you're coming off a cushion you wanted an, a, an half ball angle but you just watch this it crept to the cushion then just seemed to fly off that's why you're a lot better if you can make break just little stun screws without using cushions. Mm. And it's caused him to go wrong. Slap of the table tells you that. 40. Yes, absconded the cushion rail there, didn't he? That was the cause of him breaking down, having to play a much more complicated shot than he needed to have done. Just didn't get the reverse side, the left-hand side on the cue ball. Just didn't take enough. Wanted to come past that red. Max and he Elby couldn't fought. recover the situation. Frustrating, annoying. It's just the same as a kick, really. You feel as though it's not your fault. And if the corner pockets have been a little bit generous, the middle pockets certainly aren't. Mm. Didn't even get in the jaws of the pocket. If he had it done, he may not have left this red. But not getting in the jaws. Just struggling now. Let's 
as I say, if he if he can get in the jaws, the redder the stayed at that end of the table, but not close. Could have finished a lot worse, I have to say. This red is on for Mark Selby, the red above the black, that is, but certainly not an easy one. One. He's to stop short of the brown. Oh, he's okay. He's just sneaked past the brown and he's on the green. So another chance to clinch it at this visit. Eleven. Just slightly the wrong side of the blue, but he feels as though he can roll it in and leave himself a quarter ball cut on the red that was just below it. Forty points the lead. Two 16. reds, two blacks would be enough. Two reds, two pinks would do it. So you didn't really have to bother about those three reds on the left-hand side of the table. 17. Mm, seem to get another little bounce there of that top cushion. Definitely. Yeah, look, he's straight again. He's OK this time. Can screw back for the red in the same pocket without the aid of left-hand side. So this red, 24. it looks like it'll be a pink. And his opponent will need, well, he's had a quick look at the scoreboard. Blue would do. I feel it's easier to play for the blue than the pink. Now pink 25. was comfortable to get on. And this pink will put him 55 points in front with just 51 remaining. And it looks like the only memory he's going to take out of this match is Napon Sangam, is he's made his maiden maximum break in competition. Well, I'm sure in Thailand DVDs will be available very shortly for sale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he'll buy one. And that red going in now means no way back to the table from the young man from Thailand, but... Uh, he remember this afternoon. OK, I know he wants to win. Every player wants to win. But to be fair, Mark Selby has played some superb snooker in this match. And as you sort of intimated, Dominic, he's sitting there. Why me? Why did he have to pick on me? It's not there, but I'm That's sure the handshake will come. And it does.